Hey guys, if you're new here, my name is Patrick LeVar. I'm sharing my journey of learning Blender Octane with you guys. This is one of the videos from my free Blender 101 Octane guide. If you're totally new to Blender Octane, at least the render engine portion, this guide will help you get started. Enough of my jibba jabba, let's get straight into the video. All right, next we're going to be looking at the texture nodes, and in particular this one, the RGB texture. So to actually bring that in, we'll go ahead and pop over your menu menu and then we're going to scroll down to octane texture image we're going to start off here with the rgb image now there is another easier way to do that if you have your file open in a separate window or you can just drag and drop in your file so for example here i have an actual jpeg image or png image i'll go ahead and drag it in and it's already loaded in with the image so just another alternative or you can do it this way so first thing first we have our rgb image we can use basically EXRs inside of here, PNG, JPEGs, and a few of the other things that we can add in here. We can add in TIFFs, HDRI files, BMPs, TGAs, GIFs, and then a couple of specialized ones. Of course, you can add in normal maps, bump maps, displacement maps, again, consisting of uh, PNGs and EXRs. We can add in alpha mats, PNGs with alpha, or a TIFF with an alpha. So if we go through some of these settings here, the first thing here, we'll go ahead and plug this in to our albedo or base layer here. Typically we use these to add more realism to our objects here. In this case, I just have a simple UV map on here. So first thing we see here, we have the IES scaling. Again, right now it is set to normal value. Here we can also use normal use lap. Then we can also switch this to absolute phonomonic. Most of these settings, I will get to more advanced videos, but I leave it in default. Importing format, automatic. Here you can change the 8-bit to a 4-bit with no alpha, 8-bit for faster, and then 8-bit to 8-bit higher quality. Again, we'll get to those more advanced. And this guy, I would say leave it where it is at stock. A source, single image. Again, if we have multiple image sequences here, it would also automatically recognize that and it will pop into multiple image sequence. A movie generated or UDMs, this is where you add those and you will change the settings for that. Power is pretty much like it says, it controls the overall power. Color space, we can add in a IO color space node directly here. I do already have these, some of these are built in already. So if I wanted to say change this to an ACES color space, I can add that. Now it's in an ACES color space. Legacy Gamma, I leave it to 2.2. Anytime you're pretty much using an RGB image that's full color, you want this to be set to 2.2. If you put it to 1, that's what it's going to look like. In the past, it would always default to 1, and we would always have to go 2.2. But now it's locked in at 2.2. So anytime you have any type of information that involves color, you want this to be set to 2.2. On the opposite side, if you're using something like a normal map, you want the normal map to be set to one data, basically one. But a full RGB image, you want it to be 2.2. Just keep that in mind. Here we can invert it. Also linear sRGB inverted. And I would leave this set to default. If you know what it is, and then you want to change it, this is the way that you would change it. Next, the most important slot also on this is going to be our UV transform node. This allows us to change the coordinates, basically, rotation, which you're not really seeing too much happening on there, but there, this value is moving a little bit. You can select all of these and hit zero to add in a value for all of them. Um, our scale, of course, we can sh shift our scale on each axis, and this would be the Z depth office. Set that back to one. Translation, if you want to move it, and then of course the Z, let me set that back to one. There are different types of translations we can get into here. If you look at the transition UVs, the default, it pops in a three, three dimensional transform. There are others which we'll get into later, but just to quickly show you, if you come into Octane, Transforms, 2D Transform, 3D Transform, and these are other versions. So here's a 2D Transform, which is a little bit different. We'll get into the Transforms later. Next will be Projection. We can add any type of projection here. We're using a UV map projection. Whenever you have UVs set or 
they will basically use this one here and we can change the set of UV numbers. Also, again, we have different projections, which we'll get into later videos. If you'll come into Octane Projections, here's all of our projections here. So each one basically does something a little bit different. A box translation, plug that into projection. Now you can clearly see the difference. And then again, we can continue to transform that by adding a transform node onto the projection. And now I have a box projection onto this sphere. This sphere obviously has been UV unwrapped. So for the best results, we would want to continue to use a custom UV projection. And there it is. Then we have our border modes. Right now it's set to wrap around. We can do mirror, clamp values, black and white values, color values. This is not the best map to do this, but again, we'll get into this later. This is really helpful when you have something that just has a single image and you want that in image to be dead on the front like decals, and then you don't want them to wrap around. You will set this to black color, set this to black color, and it will just be straight on there. But we'll get to that in more detail once I start to break other videos down. So that's just a quick overall view of the RGB image node. Again, here you can come up to the top, add in another one. It basically makes a copy, close it out, and then you can add in a new image. There is our PNG. And now here's an example because I have the black color selected. Now we're only seeing that. We would add in here, projection, move it around, scale it down. And there is the wrench. And then again, I switch this to white color. Now we have white color on the outer edges, wrap around. Now the image is wrapping around. We can see it here on the bottom. Clamp values. And pretty much there it is. All right, let's get on to the opposite version of this, the grayscale image node. Guys, if you enjoyed this and you want to go deeper with Blender Octane in particular, I do have a Blender Octane community. I'm giving a seven day free trial to the community where you can get more access to content like this. Plus you can get access to the Blender Octane 101 guide as it's being released, as it's being built. And I also have material libraries, databases of nodes and different types of things to help you learn Octane Blender and an engaging community. So if that's something you might be interested in, take a look down, seven day free trial. Hey, if you don't like it, then you can just leave. Catch you in the next one. Take a look at the next video in the guide. Peace.